Okay, um, some special considerations for the performance patterning cycling. Um, where to start your pattern cycle? Let's say, for example, if you're a quad dominant athlete, okay, so what happens here is even if uh, you cycle through this and you start at a quad dominant athlete with a uh, back squat, what you'll find is um, that first repetition does uh, they adapt fairly quickly and they will adapt in a negative way to that particular exercise so what I've done is I've been able to identify my athletes um, through RPR and a, a series of other methods if they're quad dominant I actually may start them at a different exercise like reverse hyper to help them start there and then when they get to this there's less negative effects of their um, their adaptability to that quad dominant pattern so this starting them here offsets that particular um, adaptation neurological which is instant so um, some of the team starts here some of the team starts here and some of the team starts here um, based upon their individual needs but if, if it didn't matter they would all start at the same place it, w it wouldn't really matter um, let's say for example then uh, uh, let's say a hamstring dominant type hip flexor, uh, I would definitely most likely start uh, either at back squat or a uh, reverse hyper, either or, okay, just because the hamstring wants to be part of the, the uh, hip extension pattern and that can happen at the glute ham. So I would avoid this one with a hamstring dominant type of uh, person, okay, and then a QL um, type of person, I would I could actually probably have them start, especially at the glute ham hyper um, spot. So when I say that, and, and remember when they do the glute ham hyper in my gym, we, we emphasize squeezing the toe into the ground to drive home that glute pattern, especially on this particular exercise. And uh, you'll see, so these are just some of the, the basic options that this system and this concept of the cycling provide you that if you know an athlete needs work on a particular exercise you can actually have them start there if they're actually weak on that one and then also uh, you can actually just change their patterns um, quicker and have it become more uh, fluid and natural so then uh, and then it, it again I feel that it optimizes rest periods okay so you might be five to six minutes before you get back to this exercise when you cycle through maybe even more I've seen some of my big cycles take uh, eight minutes eight and a half minutes to get through and then they're coming back to this top exercise and they're starting there so again that's that's a that's an ex excellent benefit of this um, and again you'll just see more positive effects and transfer to athletic movements um, basically because there's less fatigue causing a detriment to the other exercises so again um, back squat doesn't fatigue out the reverse hyper or the glute ham especially when you're doing um, a transfer ability exercise and when I say that I'm going to release that next month so um, transfer uh, complex is basically we're talking about taking a glute ham and having it transfer into an athletic movement fairly quickly through a series of complexes that created one of my COVID things that uh, that I was able to come up with and I will produce a video on that to the group in um, most likely the next three to four weeks but again this transfer for the sporting movement is much more optimal than doing it this way I think you, we can all start to agree to that and then again as I talked about better flow to the weight room I'm able to it just seems like I you can actually have less equipment and do more complex um, pattern cycling stuff because not everybody is uh, always starting at the same spot and not everybody is is basically uh, waiting for these three exercises so there's not as much backups per se in your weight room if you don't have the amount of equipment that I have or other people have um, and then <clears throat> let's say just just to that um, schematics or um, the uh, the workflow of your weight room let's say you break your athletes up and some days if you know that uh, you're a coach and you're, you're not sure if they're quad dominant or whatever it may be you don't necessarily have to always start them uh, at the top 
Um, you can just break your athletes up into three, four groups and then have them just start at different exercises. And that might be just good enough to help them cycle through things. So if, uh, if they are, have some dominance in one area uh, that they're not supposed to, um, you're essentially only starting there one day a week or once every other week. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. But these are all the benefits of this type of performance pattern cycling. And I think, uh, uh, coaches will find this pretty effective and please on our Facebook group let us know any questions you have and I'll get to those and answer those.